at MalcolmOutloud.tv. Malcolm, how are you this week, sir? I'm doing good. I'm still celebrating uh, with that post-election celebration. <laughs> Well, uh, let's get to these awards. Recognizing that the United States of America needed a correction course immediately, this award does not go to the Republicans, but it goes to who exactly? It goes to every single American who voted, including Democrats, by the way, okay? Because if it wasn't for the Democrats uh, voting, we wouldn't have whipped their asses in the polls. And so, uh, <laughs> so, so listen, I'll tell you what I've been saying for years, actually. Okay. Yeah. The beautiful thing about America is, you know, when we go too far to the left or too far to the right to that matter, Americans will always corrupt the course and bring us down to the center. And, and I think we are a center-right mind shift in this country. We're fiscally conservative, probably more socially liberal, uh, translated, keep the government out of our lives and pay the bills uh, is what we're talking about here. You know, this was a, a historic election, uh, J.D., there's no question about it. The Senate, the House in the governor's mansion. My God, even Mosquito Control uh, went to uh, went conservative this time. And, and nobody could have predicted this election. I mean, it was it was beyond anybody's wildest dreams. But in no way is this a mandate, however, for Republicans. And I'll make that loud and clear. Uh, and let me tell you what. If they throw and take this on, as you know, many of them do, uh, you'll find that that door will swing real hard in 2016 right back and kick them in the ass. And... Uh, that's what happens in this country. So I would begin to govern and do the things you've got to do to get it done. And, and that's the most important thing at this point. Listen to the constituency. Listen to Americans, you know. We've got Malcolm Out Loud with us today. The Malcolm Out Loud TV Awards uh, for this uh, first week of November. One of the most controversial societal issues facing Americans. Let's call it that hot potato contest. That award goes to... This goes to the 6th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals. All right, so the Supreme Court declined the rule on gay marriage last month. But thanks to the Federal Appeals Court, the hot potato contest is headed back, headed back to the Supreme Court, like it or leave it, and obviously they don't like it, but they're going to have to deal with it. Um, you know, when you really dive into the issue of gay marriage, okay, I, I really always question what's the argument really about. Is it about equal benefits? Is it about legalized sex? Is it about Bible bashing? Is it, it, is it about acceptance? What exactly is the argument about? And, you know, like a lot of us, we really don't care what people do on their time. I mean, you know, I, I hear consistently, Jiggy, it's about benefits under the law that people want to be treated equally with benefits. And if that's the case, I'll get the answer. Keep the word marriage, as it was intended from the beginning of time, awarded to a, a man or a woman. It's a license. That's all it is. So what the hell? And create another license for gay couples. Or they can join the same benefits. Call it a union license or a life partnership license or equal benefits united. I don't care what you call it. <laughs> but, you know, the Supreme Court should think of some of those black robes of theirs for once and solve the problem permanently. And, you know, for those who don't like it, you know what? Too bad, so sad. People are just looking for something to complain about anyways. But this whole argument about gay marriage is just uh, over the top. And I think it's the word marriage that that's the Christian conservatives off. So I think you got to take a look at this thing and... Instead of another license for gay couples, you know, I mean, listen, God's going to judge them, not me, not you, not the next person. If it's good, it's good, you know, I mean, whatever. If it's not, it's not. I, I, I don't know. I'm not the judge. You know, I have no idea, you know. We've got Malcolm Out Loud with us today, joining us live, talking about uh, the Malcolm Out Loud TV Awards for the first week of November. If you want to get more information on uh, Brink Thinking and also making it a lifestyle, check out creatingamindshift.com. That's creatingamindshift.com. Malcolm Out Loud with us today. Authentic, uh, uh, authentic in politics, I'm butchering that word, is equivalent to <laughs> environmentalists being supportive of the Keystone Pipeline, being yourself no matter what. This award goes to... This goes to New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, without a doubt. And uh, if everyone's been following him... Uh, this past week, he had a uh, an interview with Matt Lauer on the Today Show. Do, I don't know if you've seen that or heard about it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I've heard about it. I haven't yeah. seen it. Yeah, well, he came out and, you know, and so Christie was confronted by Lauer on, on this press conference that, that Christie had this past week in his typical verbal assault on a reporter, okay? 
And uh, so here's what happened. So uh, Lala asked, uh, he says this, well, if God wouldn't sit down at a press conference, and you said sit down and shut up. Now, Lala says to Christie, do you need to stop being a bull when confronted by people who disagree with you? If you do run for the presidency, are you going to have to control that side of your personality to be seen as presidential outside of New Jersey politics? <laughs> <laughs> to, which, to which Christie replies, first of all, Matt, you're assuming I wasn't controlled. I sat and took it for a while. The hundreds of people who there deserve to hear what we had to say that day, that person had their say. I sat and listened to it. It was time for them to sit down. I'm not going to change, Matt. It's who I am. So here's the thing about Chris Christie. You know, some people call him a bully. Some call him authentic. And, you know, I wonder if Chris Christie can confront America's enemies around the world in the same tone, sit down and shut up. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. You'll have to decide, huh? <laughs> yeah, that, that you're you're completely correct on that. We've got Malcolm Out Loud with us today here on the program. As always, check out it's time to get outloud.com. Join the national dialogue over there. It's time to get outloud.com. What goes around comes around. You scratch my back, I'll ignore you when you need me. This award goes to goes to the Democratic Campaign Committee. Well, it seems the Democrats have elected to ensure that Mary Landrieu doesn't get elected. This is the uh, senator down in Louisiana. So they decided to cancel its advertising for Senator Mary Landrieu uh, ahead of the December runoff in Louisiana. Um, inside sources say the National Party has largely canceled advice of about $2 million on Landrieu. Now, the fact that she got about 42% of the vote, they feel is bad, given that most, all the rest of the vote was Republican. So they believe turning uh, people around would be highly difficult, especially in this toxic political environment. You know, there's a major caveat to this story, Jiggy, and if everyone follows me on this here, you may or may not remember, but Mary Landrieu, Senator Landrieu, was one of the final votes that pushed Obamacare over the top in the middle of the night, you might remember, back some years ago here, okay? And she and Ben Nelson of Nebraska, and there's a bunch of them, 28, 28, count them, other Democratic senators that voted for Obamacare are no longer with us as well today. Many of them couldn't get reelected. Others dropped out because they were shamed. You know, I bet they wish could they, they could have their vote all over again. But you know what I say? Karma's a bitch. What goes around comes around, kids. So uh, <laughs> couldn't happen to better people. It is you know? uh, Malcolm Out Loud with us today here on the program. He joins us live. And uh, the Malcolm Out Loud TV Awards. Check out MalcolmOutloud.tv for more information. Uh, for making the dummies look just like the real dummies, the award goes to. This goes to a company called Humanetics. Uh, okay, so here's the thing. Uh, obese occupants are up to 78% more likely to die in a car crash than an average weight driver, says Humanetics president and CEO Christopher O'Connor. I had no idea of this, Jiggy. Did you? No, I, I didn't know anything about this. Okay, I'll have it, evidently, having a body mass index of 35 to 39.9% increases your risk of death by 51%. So, more than one-third of Americans, they say, are obese. And one recent study showed that obese drivers are more likely to die in a car crash. So the world's largest maker of dummies is making one that is obese. So, to give you an example, when they test your cars out, when you drive your cars, you know, they're called the crash test dummies, okay? Yeah. The average one weighs 167 pounds, pretty pretty slim and trim. The new ones, get a load of this, will weigh 271 pounds with a BMI of 35 that can measure belt and airbag loads generating during crashes. So they are increasing the size of these test dummies over 100 pounds for fat-ass Americans so that they can protect you in a car crash. Well, that just blows my mind, I'll tell you. Now, if they can only make a politician appear to be dumber than they already are by making the political dummy, uh, but actually they do a good job on their own, so we don't need to help them in that department, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> We've got Malcolm Out Loud with us today here on the broadcast, MalcolmOutLoud.tv. And, um, Malcolm, it is, uh, it, it's an interesting day. As we wrap up here, I want to get one thought from you. 
Um, what do you think of the president coming out today in favor of a net neutrality? Yeah, I, I think like everything else, he's trying to have big government and more government. The Internet's a funny, it's a tricky thing, uh, Jiggy, but he wants to make it like a public utility, okay, uh, like everything else, because he's a big government believer. Uh, I think it's an argument he's not going to win. They're not going to vote it in. There's just no way. So, uh, I, you know, listen, I, I think the Internet, there's some problems on there, yeah. but I don't think for a blessed moment that government can solve them. And I don't think that another government agency and another government utility is the answer. Uh, I just don't. I think you've got to keep the stuff private because that's the problem with government. They're too big. Uh, you talk about obese. I think it all starts with government. <laughs> I mean, government's obese. I mean, it's overloaded. The big government agencies and all. And yep. I think having another uh, public utility agency is not going to be helpful, Jakey. So I-, I think Obama, it's another wish dream of his to create more government before he leaves office. But uh, I don't see the Republicans go along with this. Do you? No, I don't either. And Ted Cruz has already come yeah. out against it, so it'll it'll be interesting to see this move forward, but Malcolm... It will, it will. Hey, and by the way, one yeah. last thing, but I yeah. want to make sure you know. Do you know this time around, this was the first time in history, by the way, that we elected more than 100 women to Congress. I know, that's I heard the, that in the minute, the minute earlier. Today. That that's that was the, in fantastic. That wild, in that wild? Yeah. So the 114th Congress, when it gets uh, called in to, uh, they get sworn in in January, first time ever... There'll be 20 female senators, at least, and at least 81 in the U.S. House. Could be 85. There's still some uh, races that have to be solved yet with men and women that are too close. Uh, so, you know, the thing about it is, as I said in a minute, it, t- it took about 150 years from the birth of our nation before women, women were granted the right to vote. And they fought for over 100 years for that right. They didn't get the right till 1920, August 26, 1920. Uh, that's when the 19th Amendment to the Constitution was ratified. So, you know, I, I mean, you've got to think about it. As I said in the final thought on the minute, they're over, they're 50.8% of the entire population, Jiggy, and they only make up 19% of the federal legislators. And let me tell you, they couldn't do any worse than men have done, so I'd say elect more women to hell with it. <laughs> I love it. Uh, Malcolm, thanks for being with us. We'll talk to you next week, sir. All right, buddy. Take care. Appreciate it, man. Malcolm out loud with us today here on the broadcast. Goes to coast and boulder to boulder all over the Starcom Radio Network. Taking a time out when we come back. We've got more in the next hour. We're going to... Oh, we got some stuff to talk about in the next hour. Coming up. 